recording. So welcome to uh, Life on Fire Vancast. Uh, I'm with Peter. Van Life. <laughs> Van Life. And I'm in Kitchener, Ontario. Last time we did one of these Vancasts, I think I was driving with Deidre in Sudbury. Anyways, we are back from Taiwan Mission. Yeah. I've been staying at Peter's. The van is packed back here. <laughs> Deidre and I are back to living out of the van. <laughs> and uh, thanks to the body of Christ, we have uh, so many places to go. Yeah. Such a blessing being with this with you, brother. Uh, <laughs> he brings joy. He brings packets of joy. Packets of joy. <laughs> he releases joy wherever he goes. So you guys are going to drive around with us today as we uh, share just testimony about Taiwan because we were there for a full month and now we're all back and it's kind of settling in all the the things that we've saw. We saw so much in Taiwan. <laughs> Yeah, it's been now uh, a month or more for us being back. So uh, we have to remember all the stuff we saw. It was a lot. Yeah. And uh, I'm not good at summarizing stuff, but uh, we asked the Holy Spirit to help us. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess we'll start with uh, Peter is married to some uh, Jing, my friend from Taiwan. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I went there. Um, this is now my third time kind of doing like praying for people and the time before that I didn't see anything because like my heart wasn't right <laughs> I was complaining and uh, but then uh, the time after that uh, I went just to see like my wife Jing uh, in Taiwan we live here but she was visiting her family and on the whole flight there I said God just I'm just available just use me however you want and it was just a crazy it was just my wife and I mostly how long ago was this I can't remember. I'm just going to guess like 2018 maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Naomi was just a baby. So yeah, it's about six years ago. So yeah, we saw a lot. But it was just me. So it was, you know, um, we showed people we can pray for the sick and um, yeah, shared shared a lot of stuff about healing and deliverance and other things. And uh, it was really awesome. But then uh, <clears throat> I told another brother, Marcel, about it. I said, hey, if you want to go cast out demons, come to Taiwan. Because <laughs> did you see like uh, that happen? The first oh, trip? yeah. Yeah, stronger than I had anywhere else. Mm. But it, it was, I think a lot of it is if we make ourselves available, mm -hmm. then God will just, he will just pour through us. As long as we have yeah, work out, uh, everything's done out of love, then God will just, we'll see amazing things. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I saw really incredible deliverances. And uh, Taiwan so is about 5% Christian, so... And a lot of the, the Christians, what I found out last trip was uh, a lot of the indigenous are Christians. There's 12 tribes yeah. and generations. Yeah, and I didn't see any of that the first time I was there. So then we went back, uh, a bunch of us went back uh, late 2023. I think it was late, I can't remember. <laughs> and uh, we, then we, now we had a team. And we got to share in uh, one church especially, Wuchi Church uh, in Wuchi District. and. That church was so open. The pastors were so open to letting us share anything. And so we, we shared how the sick can be healed. And they already were doing this, but that every believer can do this. Mm. And, um, yeah, they caught the vision. It was so awesome. And now this is a third time. And one thing we prayed for this time is that we get to meet more unbelievers because we spent a lot of time uh, with the body of Christ. The second trip, so now this third trip. <clears throat> and that's exactly what we saw. Yeah, and, right? and this trip, there was, I think, 12 of us, including the kids. Yeah, yeah, 12 so, of us. So uh, I got really excited about this trip. <laughs> um, I was actually going to go to Nepal, but I guess Jing was praying, or she had a dream that I was to come to Taiwan. <laughs> yeah, we had lots of dreams about uh, beforehand, before this trip. So I think God was encouraging us to go. Actually, wasn't one of the trips, uh, one of the dreams to do with the indigenous? Jeff had a dream. Yeah, him, he, yeah, he had a dream about uh, like a tiki, uh, sorry, a totem pole mm -hmm. and about people worshiping other gods. And I don't remember all the details, but it all came, he said, oh, and a bear. Mm. And uh, my wife said uh, a bear is one of the national symbols of Taiwan. I can't remember the, de mm. I'm just, uh, I don't remember the details. Yeah. But... Uh, yeah, our brother Jeff said that all those things came to pass this this trip. <laughs> wow. And in the indigenous area too. So, so guys, we, we have so many testimonies of the things that we saw God do. 
um, just a bit about like the culture they worship some different gods there and it's been hundreds of years um, one of them is called Mazu which is like the god of the sea but then there's a whole bunch of other worship of other gods I don't know <laughs> dozens yeah and like my wife said like in her own family and all the families that are um, non-Christian if they're worshiping um, that religion which is mostly Buddhism Taoism and mm. maybe a mixture yeah they all have you know <clears throat> all these statues in their home and uh, it seems like a lot of people in their home they have this, this shrine set up and they burn incense and, and then they give food yeah um, so there's temples like everywhere there's temples e everywhere like kind of in Canada and the western world you'll see churches everywhere there's there's temples like everywhere and you will hear even chanting sometimes in the homes yeah. and uh, yeah the temples are like as small as a like a bus stop um enclosed bus stop to as big as like huge like three story three high stories. huge like huge like statues the size of like a 10 story building yeah it seems. the statues are giant they're huge like uh. <laughs> I, I, they're gigantic yeah uh, and then you'll see like chickens and food um, given to these gods and yeah. then also you will see hell money and that was new in this country for me but they <clears throat> they take their real money and they buy hell money and then they burn it uh for their ancestors um, that could be in hell and uh, yeah yeah so I think you'll see it everywhere it's a lot of fear <clears throat> a lot of fear to do with yeah, the hell money. like like Jing says there's 16 levels of hell um, that they believe in no heaven it's just maybe a less a less tormenting a place you go to there's yeah. no hope and we know this as believers we know there's no hope outside of Jesus so it was really awesome to share just really um, the simple gospel and uh, yeah we saw we saw people from other faiths come to Jesus just by seeing uh, some by seeing their them or their family members getting healed mm -hmm. or just like seeing that they, they can be forgiven they like, don't have I, to be stuck I remember the first one of the first times a lady I asked well can your God heal you and uh, I was with Jeff and then Jeff said well watch this and he prayed and she <laughs> got touched by the Holy Spirit and she's like what is this my God can't do that <laughs> And then they got to share the gospel with her. Yeah. That was really cool. Yeah, we saw that over and over again. It was like nonstop. Awesome. Yeah. So what we did on this trip is we did a lot of trainings and equippings, just teaching people how to share the gospel, how to pray for the sick. Uh, and then we went out uh, into the marketplace and we just practiced with the local church. And before we went to go to these different temples, the team actually went to a temple to just try to see what God does. Yeah. Go and share the gospel, pray for people. And yeah. we had a crazy testimony in one of the first temples we went to. This place was packed. The temple was absolutely packed. And you go in and the incense is so strong, so thick. You smell the incense, the smoke. It's like hazy in there. And to me, these gods, they just look, they look grotesque, these, uh, these statues. That yeah, they they have, some to. of them have like big bulging eyes. Uh, tongues are sticking out. Yeah. They look like demons. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're scary. I know. I don't know why. Oh, man. I, like my wife says when she was a kid, you know, this stuff was scary to her going to these temples. Anyways, yeah, so we went in and there was a guy with crutches. Uh, he had just, you kind of do this loop uh, along the front of the temple and you come back out. So he's on his way out inside the temple. And he was on crutches, we said, like, what's going on? And I had learned a little bit of uh, Chinese to ask, do you have pain? Where's the pain? I knew some, like, body parts and stuff. I, he had pain in his hip. And uh, we just prayed quickly, like, just a quick prayer, I think twice. And he freaked out, and we have a video of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's just freaking out. He's like, what is going on? He's, he's crying. He got totally, totally healed, like, radically healed. All the pain that he had, he said, for two years, he had this excruciating pain in his hip and uh, his wife was there too and they were just floored yeah i was trying to find where these guys were i was like where are they i was at the back where they were worshiping the different um idols yeah. and because i was really fascinated in this place because there's a lot of sounds and dinging and yeah it's and, very and, loud like, very like loud there's place. so many people worshiping in this yeah. in this temple and it's it's like gold everywhere it's very <laughs> like extravagant yeah um so then I, I i went over and i seen this guy and he was he was freaking out <laughs> he had i think jeff had his crutches yeah I and, his crutches. and then jeff was yelling does anybody need healing <laughs> 
but yes, this, so we're saying yeah, yes, so. this guy Jesus. was like grabbing his head because he was like, whoa. Yeah, he couldn't, his mind couldn't uh, comprehend what happened. Um, <laughs> but the cool thing about that is like a bunch of healings broke out. So yeah, yeah. So the, uh, the the workers in the temple were watching. So they were, I don't know if they worked for the temple, but they were selling stuff on these uh, tables. And I'm like, what, what's happening? And we went over his, and uh, we said, Jesus healed this person. And uh, we got to pray for the temple workers. And the one lady, her arm got instantly healed. Something else. Yeah, she I was shocked. Remember. She was like using her <laughs> yeah, wrist. And she's, she's like, like wow. Yeah. You got that on video too. And then the other guy came over and, and he said, what is this? And yeah. he, his wrist. And he was kind of like interested. Yeah, so the people who were coming to buy stuff from them, they were like, get these guys, have these people pray for you. They're, they're, they're healing people. This is all in the temple. But this is all in the temple. Yeah. Like right at the front doors of yeah. the temple. It just shows God's love that mm. he loves people. Uh, where the, wherever they're at, wherever they're any at. faith, they can be Satanists, they can be anything. Mm -hmm. You can be so far from God, but you got like Jesus loves you, and He wants to. And he, one way He shows it is through healing. And people, a lot of people said, like, aren't you scared to go in there? And yeah, we, we just had so much favor. <clears throat> yeah, like, I've never been myself. I've never been afraid because it says in the Bible that uh, Jesus says He was in you is greater than He was in the world. So mm -hmm. if you really believe that. You can go into any place. Any place. We and, have all, and manifest, all authority. Manifest. Uh, let the Holy Spirit flow through you. Yeah. And uh, like, what a place to to show Jesus off. Where. Yeah. Like, I wonder how many times this guy on the crutches has asked for healing, maybe from the gods he was worshiping. Mm. I don't know how it works, but yeah. Jesus instantly healed him. <laughs> he and so we saw shocked. it in another temple. Uh, oh, an old yeah. lady. She was the the wife of the temple leader. Mm. And she got healed. She was oh, she was an older mm. lady, and she, her back got healed. And uh, once again in the temple. So I cool. thought the, the the cool thing about the temple is when we went back to the beach house after, and you guys were telling Jing's uh, Peter's wife's uncle, and <laughs> he got really excited, and uh, but he was also like a skeptic, <clears throat> mm. and uh, so they he kept asking questions. And he goes to the, I think he goes to that temple. Oh. So he worships there or goes there. Yeah, and he knows he knows like the people. So he called the temple and said, Did you know so a guy got healed in your temple? <laughs> <laughs> and then we found out that it's one of the the workers, right? At the temple? Uh or I can't something. remember that. I, I don't know all the details there. But he yeah. also so my wife's uncle also got healed from um he'd have a stabbing pain every ten minutes in his neck and he got totally healed from that. And his heels, uh he couldn't put weight on his heels. I don't know what the issue was. So, but, and by the end, I guess he said, Jing said, uh, he believes in Jesus. Like he's starting. I, yeah, he's starting. Yeah, he's definitely on that to. journey. Um, mm -hmm. He actually came to the church to, uh, to share. They were sharing testimonies and praying for each other. And he mm -hmm. got up and he testified how Jesus healed him, even though he's not fully committed to Jesus. <laughs> and that just shows the power of like uh, showing. And he would ask us for, to pray for him over and over again for other things too. Mm -hmm. And so that's just, um, God just... Like uh, it's just awesome. We really have to be uh, like walk in the power mm. of the Holy Spirit, and not just not just the words. First of all, we can't speak Chinese barely. Mm. <laughs> I know a few words. I I want to learn more. But healing you can do in any it trans Actually, it transcends Chinese, every your language. Chinese was getting pretty good. At that. Yeah, at the end I could say like, "Can I pray for you? Do you have pain, sickness, and uh, a couple basic uh, phrases?" Mm. And uh, yeah. Uh, another testimony I just thought of was the lady's house we went to that had the dream. So the the church took us to her house and she had a dream that 12 people would show oh, up yeah, to yeah. pray for her. Yeah. And we prayed for her yeah, and she had a really bad accident. Yeah. She crashed on a scooter, a bunch of hot oil poured on her or something and her body was really banged up she had burn marks and they uh they took a muscle out of her forearm on her right forearm and they uh <clears throat> on her left calf uh near her ankle they, they actually a strip of flesh had been removed so you could almost see to the bone and look i'm sorry to describe it so gross but yeah. there the flesh was removed like a band yeah and uh so she had no use of her right hand and her left shoulder had been the uh, bone had cracked here mm. and as we prayed oh it was amazing yeah she could move her she could move her whole yeah. arm she could not move it <clears throat> so she could move her whole arm and anyway she was praising god by the end of all of the prayers yeah and i think you guys went back we went a second time and we saw this time like her hands are i i haven't seen it much like this but as we prayed her hands started shaking under the power of god <laughs> like like this 
and um, we prayed for her, aunt, for her leg again because the, the tissue is very tight. Mm -hmm. And we prayed it. She said it's all loose. It all loosened off. Mm -hmm. And um, that was really cool. And her brother was there, and he got baptized in the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. there uh, as we prayed. And uh, yeah, so God's God's doing amazing things. Wow. And <coughs> there, guys, there's so many testimonies. One of the ones that I shared the other day at the church was one day we we got on this Greyhound bus. Well, it's not a Greyhound, but just picture a big bus. Double deck. Is it double, double deck? Yeah. It was big. It yeah. was big, and they were singing karaoke. That's like a big thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and we were going. I'm like, and then I was like, where are we going? I didn't really realize where we were going. I knew we were going to a new believer's house, but I was like, why is there so many of us? Like, there's a lot. Like, it was like 40 of us. Mm. Um, and so we went two hours or something, and we got four, I think it was four, four hours. hours. Okay, Three, it felt like hours. we were going yeah. a long time. So then we got to this uh, new believer's house, and while we were there, we went in and everybody was worshiping, and it was crazy. And I'm like, why are we all here for one believer? Yeah. So then all of a sudden I heard these motorcycles, and this biker gang comes, and I'm like, who is this? But they were like the Christian bikers. They were ex-like mobsters. They're the happiest bikers I've ever seen. Ha happiest biker club I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyway, that's true. They actually had a flag. And it was like a biker flag, Christian biker flag. And they stuck uh, it in the house, kind of like claiming their territory. <laughs> um, so there, this is a little house, but there we're like, there's so many of us. We filled the whole home. And we're worshiping. And then all of a sudden, they started doing these renouncing prayers. Yeah. They were basically renouncing. Singing hymns. Singing hymns. beautiful. Uh, so this went on for a while. It was, it was really beautiful. Yeah. And I was like, wow, this is what they do for every new, like, new believer. <laughs> they drive hours on end. Yeah. It's very, uh, very humbling because uh, the Taiwanese are very hard workers. Mm -hmm. Like, they work a lot. And for them to take the time off, like a whole busload, like 30 people, um, <laughs> taking that time off to drive four hours each way, I think it was, and then like an hour or two there, like basically dedicate their whole day mm -hmm. and somebody had to rent a bus and uh it's very humbling like i don't know here in canada i don't see i don't see that much dedication <laughs> to to go smash some idols yeah so yeah. that yeah that and smashing idols that's what happened at the <clears throat> end so at the end they said um okay we're gonna go smash the idols so i went upstairs with everyone <laughs> and they had this room and and picture a massive room statues um a big kind of table with all of the idols on pictures which i found out later was ancestral worship they have their ancestors um incense and the whole room is kind of smoky burnt and <laughs> mm -hmm. from them worshiping and doing whatever they do yeah like there was idols on a table and there's idols on the wall or like statues and uh, ancestor pictures and hanging from a beam i think there was ashes or the ancestors and stuff yeah but they just went hardcore and they, <laughs> they brought out hammers and started chainsaw. smashing and then some guy comes up with a chainsaw he's like Rrr! <laughs> and they start chopping everything up and yeah. i'm thinking like oh that's a nice table why are you <laughs> they're chopping the table up yeah and everything they, went yeah. and then they throw it all out the window and put it in garbage bags um but they were really into this um and it was really awesome like just to see like the passion and one guy said i've been waiting my whole life to smash these idols yeah, one of the christian bikers he wanted to really do this yeah because <laughs> he used to worship them too and a lot of those bikers were like mobs mob guys uh, and they would share like how they worship these idols mm. um yeah that was that was beautiful and just you felt the you felt the love of the mm -hmm. people and you felt the, the presence of the holy spirit for mm -hmm. sure and it was like a real testimony to the yeah. whole community yeah because like what we found out after when you get baptized because she was a christian for a while but baptism is a big deal so like when you actually get baptized there you have to renounce like the temples and yeah everything so. yeah they, they know like believers there they know and they when, when they get baptized that's that's the um that's they a decision cut, point yeah. that's where you really cut off the old life just like it says in the bible and uh they they know that <clears throat> now they have to they can't do the temple worship the mm -hmm. idol worship and so <laughs> it's a big decision because their whole like community we, we will see know. a lot we'll of families where there's only one believer in the family so they kind of get persecuted because the whole family is doing this stuff mm -hmm. and then suddenly you're not and then your parents might be pretty upset and your siblings mm. but people will do it they, we saw we saw people that jesus says count the cost so these people they know that they they're counting the cost when they and they only call a a, a christian a believer after they get baptized it's mm. interesting <laughs> oh. because they know that's, they know that's like the 
Yeah, so many people will go to church years, maybe on Sunday. Yeah. But, but when they actually get baptized, that's like, that's a big deal. Yeah. And it's yeah. Well, it's a big deal here too. Yeah, <laughs> so they had a carnival. <clears throat> the church set up a carnival, and uh, the, it was packed. These tents were packed. And mm. I think uh, like six or seven people got baptized, got baptized. there. And they just, they some of them just came to faith, like that week or something. Mm. And that was beautiful. There was a, <clears throat> a young girl, they just brought her, somebody from the church had witnessed and she just came to faith she got baptized there and she got baptized in the holy spirit uh <clears throat> i think two weeks later we saw her mm -hmm. and she actually started singing in tongues i've never seen it before and she didn't know anything about that, that stuff i didn't know that story. yeah yeah there's so many stories we actually yeah. somebody <laughs> got baptized in the holy spirit and spoke in multiple languages at yeah. one, <laughs> at one thing yeah she spoke in uh, japanese japanese and english and english i've never even seen that before but the translator was like oh my gosh she's speaking in multiple languages yeah um, amazing speaking about that church actually um we saw a mass deliverance happen and many people I don't know. I've never really seen anything like that. It just happened out of nowhere after we prayed. Well, yeah, Brody was sharing what the heart. Um, unforgiveness. And unforgiveness. It seems to be a big, uh, well, I guess everywhere. Yeah. People have uh, unforgiveness and believers can't have unforgiveness. We have to let it go. Mm. So, because it can hold us into kind of torment. So, Brody was sharing about unforgiveness. And uh, then we just started uh, saying now anyone so we had people forgive there was crying yeah. and there was really touched hearts and we said anyone now any torment i'll leave these people and and suddenly uh it started slow like one person started yeah. kind of <clears throat> manifesting and then the anyways by the <laughs> end it was, end, a, a it was the whole church like a bit basically and everybody came to the front yeah and there was like a willingness everybody wanted to get free yeah um and by the end and tons we, of people got touched by god yeah nobody was really like laying hands mm -hmm. uh at, for a long period there and mm -hmm. but god was just suddenly god touching people it. and they would just start crying and that's where that woman started uh, speaking in, uh, japanese and english mm -hmm. um we saw a lot there a lot of people who also were min also ministering yeah. in the church they also the, like god was touching them and mm -hmm. they were receiving healing um we don't know all the things that happened, but a lot <laughs> happened. So and yeah. we, we heard tons of testimonies after people came and shared. Yeah. Um, a lot of it was unforgiveness. <clears throat> it's a big one. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even now, you if, if somebody's it. listening to this and you have unforgiveness, if you think <laughs> about that person, that's kind of how you know. And yeah, if you, if, yeah. And you can release that to God and you can ask the Holy Spirit to help you release that unforgiveness because well peter and i know we hear tons of stories where people like <clears throat> a lot of sin was done to them and uh, trauma so it's hard to forgive yeah it happened to me mm -hmm. I, I had to forgive i was even before i came close to jesus i knew i had to forgive because the weight was too heavy and that's what it is it's a, it's a, puts a heavy weight on you and it's just not worth it <clears throat> it's like god says vengeance is mine so if somebody really hurt you you release them and we don't want anyone to go to hell Mm -hmm. if we really know what that place is like so that's why jesus said uh love your enemy bless those who curse you and pray for those who mm -hmm. are abusing you so it's really hard to do but with the power of the holy spirit it's, it's not it's yeah. actually not hard but we have to surrender it and um the hardest thing for me when i had to forgive this one person is even saying that mm -hmm. person's name because uh i noticed when i tried and say the name i didn't want to say it and that's mm -hmm. how i knew there's there's uh that thing is holding me captive mm. and when i decided i'm gonna say the name i said so and so i choose to forgive you mm -hmm. and actually i actually had to do it more than once because you know our minds are can al mm. almost be on a program and I, I got freedom from it so now in the taiwanese culture it's very uh it's like a, su a submissive culture so mm. you submit to your husband um children submit to their parents a lot more than here in the west mm -hmm. That's but true. but through that and that, that's that's I mean it's biblical but then the person in authority can abuse that person too mm. so that's where a lot of uh, right. hurt has come boundaries yeah so that's where a lot of forgiveness is needed and there's always there's always mm. grace to forgive um, mm -hmm. if we think about what Jesus forgave us for mm -hmm. then then it's uh, it puts it in perspective yeah, and what Jesus did like when he died on the cross he said father forgive them they don't know what they're doing that's why he's mm. dying uh, a sinless man a blameless man a son of god and uh he chose to forgive his tormentors those who put him on the cross well, those who falsely accused him killed. betrayed him while he's wow. dying 
so that's that's the model he he left for us and mm. yeah so just encourage you guys just to um forgiveness well, helps yeah. you and it, it's for your heart yeah <clears throat> um, it's to set you free most of the people we see while we're doing outreach and stuff on the streets with severe addictions and uh, different torment is unforgiveness everywhere. yeah yeah and, and i have to check my heart mm -hmm. often like you know stuff happens to us i'm like oh yes yeah, so people it, i need to walk in unforgiveness yeah we can walk in like <clears throat> that type of um, love and forgiveness every day because sometimes during the week it can gather up yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> every day man i just like yeah. uh, i need to choose to walk by the spirit mm -hmm. uh, yeah <laughs> um and so we went into the mountains also and that was like amazing they have these like little roads oh yeah and it's it's pretty crazy like it, it's windy and you go high like on the <laughs> like right on the edge of a mountain um yeah. and we went deep i don't know how long did we go up those mountains for yeah, it was a long time and we went to visit these tribes so uh, actually one of the prophecy one of the one of the dreams that somebody on our team had actually came to pass on that mountain we were running like through the mountains we went for a run and we came and we saw those totem poles yeah yeah um and it was like right <clears throat> in the main the, the main area of this village really beautiful village mm -hmm. but one of the translators actually also had a dream or i think a vision of yeah. us training or a team training people up on this mountain she right? had several visions she several? saw she saw uh, a temple on the mountain and the main demon which i think is the mazu demon I, mm. I don't know but the main demon said oh we gotta go we gotta leave yeah, we can't and stay it left the out mountain. of the roof and the other demons went that left with them <laughs> and it's really encouraging um that must mean the holy spirit's coming into the temples <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> driving out the demons uh yeah and that some kind of revival would start there and uh, she had many visions very detailed with I, the indigenous I don't remember them with exactly. indigenous though yeah the indigenous especially mm -hmm. so it was really uh it was really um uh a blessing to go to see and the one church oh my goodness mm. uh the people were so excited they drove hours yeah are you talking about <clears throat> the mountains they drove through. well the second one in the oh, mountains yeah so it was like a younger definitely a lot of young people there mm -hmm. okay. and a young the pastor the leader was young and we just shared and then uh the brother jeff uh, brought someone up on stage and, okay. and had someone yeah. pray for them right away and then we told uh we told the guys in the church the members you pray for your neighbor you pray for the next person mm. next to you and many of them had never done this mm. and suddenly they're just praying with authority like as if they'd done it for years i really i really had not seen it like the so enthusiastic <laughs> And I was watching. I, we have a video of that too. Like um, this one girl prayed for the girl beside her who had had back pain for 10 years. Mm -hmm. And she just spoke some words, be healed. And that woman started crying and gave her a hug. <laughs> and she was instantly healed from 10 years of excruciating back pain. Another woman couldn't open a water cap bottle mm -hmm. for I think it was 20 years. I don't know what was wrong with her muscles or whatever. And suddenly she could do it and she was so touched <laughs> wow. and all around all around the room like crazy crazy stuff like um oh it was beautiful uh someone got delivered from depression mm. another uh, person came in late and she fell down and got delivered from some torment i can't remember what it was beautiful <laughs> it was there's, so amazing there's so many testimonies in 30 <clears throat> days that it's yeah it's hard to summarize us yeah and yeah. we're like hearing even testimonies still coming from the church yeah and they're praying for each other now a lot with authority like that and we're um we're seeing yeah they're sharing more testimonies of, of that of that stuff and like the cool thing <clears throat> about this place is all the pastors are, seem to be in unity across the island and they're all like even for us going there they were like for that big festival they're fasting and praying mm. together yeah yeah yeah, so it's, it is humbling, like, how the things they do, um, the dedication they have. Mm -hmm. So we actually learned from them a lot. <laughs> like Tons. The dedication. Like, and then we did these on Mondays. We did these, uh, this teaching series for eight series, a uh, series of eight. And that was at 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. So they're working all day. And mm -hmm. then they would still come faithfully, like many, like 30 or 40. Um, and serve us and feed us like oh, crazy. Yeah, and like, they, they were so, so... Uh, a servant heart like we were there to serve and it was like they were serving us <laughs> it was very uh very humbling yeah we learned a lot just about 
community hospitality yeah. And yeah we live so we live together 12 of us and a yeah, small well nine adults three children yeah we lived in one beach house with like <laughs> yeah. a small like i mean it, it, i mean it was awesome like i love uh, i love i love uh yeah we learned with brothers and sisters we learned learn, lots from yeah, each other learn to compromise because all we are all <laughs> from different cultures really yeah. in a sense <laughs> it's easy to hang out with someone for two hours on a Sunday, but mm -hmm. <laughs> when you live twenty four hour twenty four seven, then you learn. Uh, well, you learn to start walking in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. So yeah, you can't let bitterness come in your heart or uh, judgment. Criticism. No, we were together. We were together like twenty four <laughs> hours a day, basically. Yeah, it was. I was. Uh, that's really edifying too. That really sharpens you. Yeah, we had one bathroom. Yeah. So well, they, well, kind of. We had a bathroom outside, a shower, and an outdoor toilet. Yeah, there was one on our team, Andrea. She's very good at uh, thinking ahead. So she's like, mm. oh, we should bring a portable a toilet thing. And, uh, that and was portable in the shower. <laughs> and a portable shower. So that was really helpful. Which is kind of cool. I'd go for my morning run, and after I could jump in the outdoor shower. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, But still, there's a lot of us for all the showers and everything. Yeah. And uh, so that, that beach house is actually uh, my wife's parents uh, live there. Uh, stay there mm -hmm. and so uh one day they brought i think all their f they had a family reunion thing and we got to oh, pray yeah. for almost all the family members like i don't know 15 yeah uh all unbelievers except maybe a few mm -hmm. and one by one you know they they were touched by god and uh jesus says you know heal the sick and then tell them the kingdom of god has come near to you that's mm -hmm. how powerful it is when people receive uh, a touch from jesus yeah, that was an amazing day too. They they brought like I don't know, it was like a feast. Yeah, well, sushi. I, it feels like every day was a feast. Every there. day was a feast. <laughs> yeah, they. Oh man, there's a lot a lot of good food in Taiwan. They have these night markets. Mm. Um, like <laughs> they can the big ones go on. Like the night they markets just are amazing. On. And we got to pray for a lot of people in night markets. Peter had a cool story in the night market. He prayed for this family. And then they actually invited you yeah. back to their home. Yeah. And you went. Yeah, we went. And uh, then some of the family members got touched. That's not the end of it. Because later on, we were just in a sports store. Nothing to do with uh, anything. And this guy was walking by. And he was a guy from that house. And, and as he he's walking friend. by the store, he's mm -hmm. telling his friend who he's with about these people who came to his house <laughs> to pray for their family. Yeah, he's like, this is the guy. And then, <laughs> Only gods can set that up. And then did you get to pray for So them? I got to pray for the woman, and uh, she uh, got some relief from her back pain. <laughs> but she was a Christian. So this unbeliever is telling her Christian friend, his, his Christian friend, about how these people came to pray. And then, so she got, she got uh, the pain was leaving her back. And then she's like, I've never seen a Christian like this before. <laughs> And uh, I got to share a little bit, you know. Um, this trip, guys, was a real adventure. Like, yeah. And when in the store, I think you and some others prayed for the the uh, owner, the owners, and then of they, the sports store. Yeah, <laughs> yeah actually, then so stuff was going on inside, stuff was going on outside. Yeah, and this happened all the everywhere time. we went. Everywhere. Yeah, we were praying for the store owner, and then some of the other like uh, workers came over. Yeah, and, and the restaurants. Uh, we almost always get to pray for waitresses. Uh, Brody had a word for the one. She was an unbelievable. The one was a Christian, one wasn't. And what was the mm. word? It was really strong. Uh, mm. I, I was crying. <laughs> Which restaurant was this? Uh, I don't remember. Oh, two yes. two young girls. Oh, that was a hot... Well, everything was hot pot. But the, the restaurant was... There was some young girls, and they were at the end. Um, and I think they were Christians, actually. One, one wasn't. One was. One wasn't. So yeah. I, I gave them just some... I asked God for some words for them. And it was to do with uh, their career and where they were going. Um, mm. I don't know the exact word, mm. um, but they were <clears throat> really encouraged that God would uh, think about them. Yeah, that God knew their... And the one girl was so touched. Yeah. And, yeah. Even now, I was, I was almost tearing up because of the, prof the prophetic word, when, when God shows you a person's heart, mm -hmm. that he knows that he sees you. And if you're watching this, mm. he sees you. He knows everything you've been through, mm. the trauma, the hurt, the broken promises, broken mm. dreams. And nothing is wasted with God. It says He collects your tears in a bottle. Mm -hmm. Like it's you're you're so precious to the to the Lord. You're so precious to mm -hmm. Jesus. Uh, everything you've been through, He can redeem it. I've seen God mm -hmm. redeem people who've been abused, and mm -hmm. they 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 overcome it, mm -hmm. and then they can share others who are going through that struggle right now. So, whatever you're going through now, um, the Bible says that uh, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but He delivers them from them all. So if you're in Jesus, he'll 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 get you through. If you're not in Jesus, I encourage you to get into 
give your life to him now yeah and you might so you simple. might be out there watching like we've seen it over and over like the enemy maybe you got like traumatized or somebody hurt you as a young person um, and you've been holding shame and guilt we see that a lot but Jesus can meet you in that place um, he yeah. can meet you he can heal uh, those places yeah because um, the enemy he wants us to keep our heart hard and um, but Jesus wants into those places and he can take a hard heart and soften that heart and he can uh, fill it with his love um, mm. and he can help bring peace to those areas of you yeah somebody sent me a book called God doesn't waste your pain mm. and it's so true he doesn't even waste the pain all the things you've been through and you might wonder where was God when mm. this happened but I, I just um, man just trust me like he will he will redeem all the things you've been through mm -hmm. and um, uh, uh, it's just amazing God he can he can recover your past like mm -hmm. it's, it's insane <laughs> yeah, we've seen it in, obviously in our own lives but we've seen it yeah. in so many so many lives yeah you know like I, I had kidney failure so I was on dialysis for three years every day and so and you climbed a mountain there <laughs> yeah <laughs> a mountain. yeah and I was so healthy but my brother gave me a kidney mm. and and uh, that act of love is what led me to search for God's love, mm. his true love, not religion. I'm talking about a relationship with Jesus where he is your father, mm -hmm. your heavenly father. And, and uh, what father, what good father doesn't care about their kids, right? So my father cares about me, my heavenly father. And um, but through that, through that experience, now I have compassion for people who are going through chronic sickness, mm. like pain every day or yeah so and peter's God story is a, yeah. a, a miracle like we like climbed up that fire mountain yeah and you, mountain. you would have never no i'd be dead <laughs> yeah unless god did a miracle and healed my kidneys too but uh my brother gave me a kidney and he and god used that medical system um and uh and now i have i have that understanding mm. like brody's been through addiction so mm -hmm. he knows he knows those things that were triggers that cause addiction and stuff yeah uh, but the, the, the amazing thing it. about the addiction is like, well, you never had addiction, but God gave you a heart now to minister to so many people that do have addiction. You don't, and you don't, you didn't grow up in that lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. And not I didn't have drug addiction, but yeah. there were other there were other addictions, like yeah. sexual addiction and stuff. Mm. And those are those are damaging too. God wants us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jesus said, uh, "It's good that I go to the Father because I'll give you another Helper, another Comforter, mm. the Holy Spirit." Mm -hmm. So he sent someone to us so that we don't have to go to other substances or behaviors. Because mm -hmm. if we have the Holy Spirit, he comforts us. Um, and we just have to learn to give him our pain and uh, those triggers and everything, right? Yeah, if you get touched by the Holy Spirit, like everything changes yeah. <laughs> because he fills all of those places and all those voids. And, and then instead of turning to those, you just turn to him. Yeah. And it's like... And addictions so can't better. fill, they can't fill that void that we feel, right? Addictions no, can't fill it because then are you just annoying. need more and more. You just keep going for more. <clears throat> it's amazing. Jesus said, come to me, everyone is thirsty and, and uh, um, you know, and Give you won't rest. thirst anymore. So the thing is with addiction is you're always thirsty, you always need more of that drug. Mm. But when you come to Jesus and you find that he is a fulfillment, that he's, he satisfies your soul, then you're no longer hungry for those things. And you found what you've been looking for your whole life. Mm -hmm. I found what I was looking for my whole life, and I didn't even know what I was looking for. Yeah, that, that's the same <laughs> like, as me. Searching. <coughs> yeah. We were always searching to fill that place, but yeah. we didn't really know it. Yeah. So anyways, what yeah. other stories? What else? Uh, oh, my gosh. There's... Well, first of all, when we were on top of that mountain that we climbed, <laughs> there was an earthquake. Yeah. So I don't know if you guys have ever been in an earthquake. That was the first time. Uh, I never really even thought about when I was going there. Oh, an earthquake. That's but we're on top of the mountain and I convinced these guys to go up to do on our day off to go climb. We got, <laughs> we got up super early. We didn't know what we were getting into. They, they didn't know what they were getting into and uh, definitely didn't know there was going to be an earthquake. Very beautiful mountain. It overlooked. It's hard to explain. I've never seen yeah. a mountain like this. But um, <clears throat> yeah. when we got to the top, my phone uh, started ringing. I'm like, oh, what's that? And I looked. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Like a like number seven earthquake <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was uh, one of the strongest ones they had in a while it was on the other side of the uh island. directly across hualin i'm saying it wrong but yeah. um that was 200 kilometers away but we felt it so strong on the mountain like mm -hmm. it was really moving yeah the whole mountain <laughs> was, shaking. was shaking but yeah. because reuben and i were running 
I guess her legs went with the vibration. <laughs> and they didn't I, feel it. I feel it. And I honestly didn't know how severe this earthquake was till we started seeing, <clears throat> like, this was a worldwide event. <laughs> yeah, it was a strong one. Yeah. And buildings were sideways, and by the grace of God, I don't think anybody died. Uh, some, yeah, some, some were injured. Or... <clears throat> but everything's built there. It happens a lot. Like, mm -hmm. my wife's like, oh, another earthquake. <laughs> but uh, for us, it was a real yeah, big it was a real <clears throat> experience. And, yeah. Yeah, and like with uh, some other things we got to share is like what we've seen, baptism, we've seen uh, the need to repent of your sins before mm -hmm. getting baptized. So we share that in the church, picked that up. I don't mm -hmm. think uh, that was a big thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, when we go in the water to get baptized, first make a decision to mm -hmm. leave your old life completely because you're burying that old life. But if you are want to continue in certain things that are don't honor God, you're not really getting buried. It's more like somebody's trying to drown you. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> against your will because you want to continue in something. So first repent, make mm -hmm. a decision, turn away from everything. And the Bible, uh, you know, in Corinthians, it says these things that are works of the flesh, it's called, right? Mm. That's what we want to have the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And we want to crucify them. You know, have to crucify the flesh and, and make a decision. Mm -hmm. Like it even says, bring fruits of repentance, fruits of repentance, showing mm -hmm. You know, if you're robbing banks, <coughs> stop robbing banks. <laughs> so if you're stealing, stop stealing. If you're if you're drinking, make a decision, stop drinking. Mm -hmm. Then get baptized, and then you have that new life. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, I think uh, I think um, yeah, we got to share some things out that uh, we've noticed that are really uh, mm -hmm. important. Like I mean, the biblical. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, what else do we get to share? Identity. Mm -hmm. Identity, yeah, uh, identity uh, was a big one, and authority because a lot of the people mm -hmm. um, that left temple worship, I guess, are scared to go back mm -hmm. because of the demonic. Mm. So a lot of teaching authority, knowing who you are in Christ, um, yeah, how to pray. Like um, some believers that we met, not necessarily in that church, but they didn't really know how to pray. Like mm -hmm. it's just simple. You just talk to Jesus, right? And um, a lot of things like that. Yeah, authority, identity, forgiveness, that we are forgiven. There's so much uh, to do. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Like, there's, we left so excited because our prayer is like that these teachings and trainings will go to the other churches. Yeah. And we <laughs> actually, so we did go back to the temp, we went back to this thing called the Mazu Festival. <laughs> oh, and yeah. this is like a oh this was the biggest yeah, thing yeah. this was huge this is like a, a pilgrimage where they go across the whole island hundreds of kilometers um they worship that god um they, mazu. yeah mazu they carry around this big thing with that god in it the statue mm -hmm. the idol and they go around and people actually go under it and it's like they say it's a blessing or something oh i didn't even see that yeah but i didn't see people go under <coughs> it this is more or less i read online but i seen the statue and people chasing it and running after it mm. and so just so you guys know like in western countries or around the world you, you get dedicated as a baby to jesus they dedicate you to that god mm. and people like if i say jesus loves you they say mazu loves you <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> so it's completely you. opposite right <laughs> so they chase after this thing and they try to touch it because they want to get close to the the statue of the god or the idol of the god and they they want to get near it they're, mm. they're very <clears throat> passionate and so this festival it's basically in a way of them evangelizing they shoot fireworks yeah it's crazy yeah. it's crazy it loud really it's crazy. at night uh you just smell the firework and um <laughs> one guy had like the firework exploded and it burned through his through his clothes and yeah right in front of me i'm like oh my gosh his back's <laughs> on fire <laughs> he was one of the uh they have this all this procession of people like helping with this stuff and he got burned by this firecracker and people dress up <laughs> like these gods and they kick the fireworks and they shoot them and they believe the fireworks scare away the demons yeah <laughs> so anyways it, it you will hear these fireworks all over the whole island yeah not, and they will take this like uh parade kind of all over and it's kind of like i don't know the way i explained it is like a rave mm -hmm. like it's like a rave for the gods because they have these vehicles that are all covered in technicolor like lights flashing loud music yeah. um people are dressed up like the gods there's there's uh, drinking uh there's mm. all different sorts of things yeah and it's really rowdy like yeah. like we were stuck in a crowd where you couldn't even move yeah, we it were was like packed it was packed 
Um, so we brought the church. We went a couple times, but we brought the church back to the the festival, and we saw crazy things. Like it was nuts. Like yeah, it was, really was um, the most healing I've seen in one place. People getting uh, healed of different things, and um, I don't know. Like uh, so, two of us wore this sign, and it was written in Chinese, uh, "Free Healing." Mm -hmm. Main Fei Yitz, uh, so somehow in Chinese. And uh, so a lot of people are like looking at the sign, and through through that we got to pray for a lot of people. And then um, this one guy, I think he was drunk. Yeah, and, that's uh, the guy. Well, he came to me. Yeah. So this guy tried to come up to me, and he was all super drunk, and he was trying to grab me and hug me, and <clears throat> and uh, it, I was like, "What's wrong with this guy?" So then I kept telling him like, "Jesus loves you," and he's like, "Oh, I know, Jesus loves me," and and he said, "Let me bring you to my friends," and I said, "Well, where's your friends?" Yeah. So he brought us to a mechanic shop, <laughs> but it was more or less like a big party of mm. people drinking and it was packed, like yeah. the whole mechanic shop. Yeah, and so many people got got uh, healing there, just prayed for one after another. There was a seat, like the, like yeah. the, we called it the hot chair. Yeah, right? yeah, <laughs> one after another, you just come up for, for being prayed pray, over. A big lineup, over. Yeah. a big lineup formed. Yeah, and we got to share a little bit of and Jesus. And Bibles got given in. Yeah, a lot of Bibles and... Uh, Oh, that was amazing. And then... Um, well, we went we, across the street. And it was happening behind the other the, the yeah, team members. Yeah, and then there was other another part of the team was in another place. And all these, uh, like, I don't know if they were, like, gangsters or something. They were getting healed. And um, then uh, our brother Marcel, I don't know if he had a word for this lady. Anyways, this woman, this young girl was uh, live streaming. Mm. Oh, yeah. And uh, she's like, what are you guys doing? I think she saw the sign. I can't remember the details. But... I think we knew she had depression or she shared it. And uh, so on live stream, we prayed on her. We just touched her head and she felt the uh, tingling and stuff happening in her head. And she got she got uh, something left her. Mm. And uh, this was on a live stream. She wasn't a believer. So I love to find out who it was because uh, that that got <laughs> live streamed to all her viewers. And uh, we, we sh shared about Jesus on the live stream. On the live stream. Yeah, it was so cool. <clears throat> That remind me of uh, the live stream, the Freedom Convoy in Canada when there was people live streaming and we got to preach into the live yeah. streams. And there was like sometimes in the live streams, like hundreds of thousands of people hearing the gospel. Wow. <laughs> live streams are awesome. Yeah. So everywhere we went, like, I don't know how late did we come, When did we get home, come home from that? That was must have been midnight or midnight? something. Well, because we were leaving. Yeah. The and then we always stopped. And we stopped again. Like everywhere yeah. we went, our team. Like we were leaving and we were passing another party and then next thing you know, we're hanging out with this party of people. Uh, yeah. They were drinking, offering us, uh, they were giving us tea, yeah. I think. And that was crazy. Like yeah. we ended up, uh, their kids came out and their kids were so hungry for Jesus. They put out their hands yeah. uh, to like, just let us pray let us them. pray and feel the Holy Spirit. Yeah, yeah. And the one girl, you could see the Holy Spirit just, uh, just come around her and, uh, Wow, that was beautiful, seeing little kids. We saw it in a few places. Another place, uh, this young boy, I, I got a word. He had nightmares, and uh, we prayed for him. And then I can't remember all the details, but uh, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit came on him, too. It was so beautiful. Yeah, he said uh, he wanted the Holy Spirit to to, yeah. to fill him, or yeah. you prayed for him. I think he would have spoken in tongues if uh, I, I would have encouraged him there. But, uh, yeah, it was really... Uh, we saw a lot of times we'd get a word for somebody and uh, that was beautiful <laughs> it, it was, so many things it was never a dig uh, everywhere we went <clears throat> and the church the about Mazu what that was so cool was they were so encouraged that they were telling the other churches yeah they're like oh we yeah saw they shared some of the videos of uh, they they uh, one of their guys uh, recorded the whole thing I, maybe he's gonna make it into a video that'd be nice to see but he followed mm -hmm. all around and he said when he watched the video after, he was just like, this is just crazy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wish. <laughs> see all the things. <clears throat> and the cool thing is, like, this wasn't just Taiwan. Like, you guys, we, we can experience this stuff wherever we go. Yeah. So sometimes <clears throat> people, they're like, oh, why does that happen there? But, like, since we've been back from uh, Taiwan, multiple people have got baptized. Yeah, we've seen I've people seen... Get, getting delivered. Uh, even uh, prayed for a woman over the phone and for the son, and the, the mother fell down. I heard this thud on the phone. The mother got delivered from something, and uh, you saw mm -hmm. two people get delivered. And I saw, yeah, and even in since in Kitchener, a couple people got baptized. <laughs> like, w if we just be obedient, 
and just listen to the Holy Spirit. God will lead us on this awesome adventure. Yeah. And uh, he wants to use all of us. Yeah. Uh, and it's like it becomes <laughs> every day becomes every day is an adventure it's, and so unique every day you get up it, it's you just don't like know what the, you don't know what's going to happen that day you don't yeah you don't know yeah. and it's just like this wonder you wake up and you surrender and you say okay god um fill me with your love and and help me just be obedient and and share yeah like we're in here in kitchener i i have um a property here and there's a guy who i just talked about spiritual things like just uh this past week and then another girl who i had prayed for like maybe two a year or two ago and she said i was at a bus stop i was telling this guy about jesus and he says he's he's staying at this house and you, he knows you <laughs> that was that same guy i just had a spiritual conversation with and look at how god cares about like he cares about mm -hmm. you he cares about that individual he's after that one that one person and it's like he it's like he hunts you down sometimes <laughs> that's what happened <laughs> he to me he chases you down and i feel like i couldn't get away it happened to me too and i tried I kept, to resist I kept resisting <laughs> he kept coming i was so stubborn but he got me in the end mm. he'll get you <laughs> yeah he'll get you. it's true <laughs> maybe he's getting you right now <laughs> <laughs> so we just wanted to uh encourage you and we also just we wanted to get all these testimonies off our hearts there's so many yeah i'm sure we missed a lot uh, these are some highlights that we're just remembering now <clears throat> I'm yeah. sure by the grace of God, we'll be going back. Uh, yeah. I'm praying I get to go back. It was so yeah. awesome. Yeah, we're going to keep praying about it. We had a few more. I think my wife had another dream mm -hmm. about Taiwan, about other people from Canada going. So wow. who knows what happened. Um, but maybe we can pray for you guys. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe that as we share testimony, it stirs our faith, but it stirs your faith. Um, and Jesus is alive. So yeah, uh, he's in us. Um, yeah. maybe he speaks. He speaks through, through us. He speaks to your heart. Yeah. Maybe even hearing. Maybe you've heard him. Uh, maybe you had a dream. Mm -hmm. I had a dream that changed my whole life. Mm -hmm. Maybe you had a dream that you don't understand. You can ask him. But some people, I, so many people have had dreams and they can't shake this dream. Mm -hmm. They don't know what it means, but it could be from it could be from Jesus. So ask him about it. Yeah. <clears throat> so guys, uh, maybe I'll just pray. Um, in pray for me i'm going to be tra traveling peter might be traveling this summer mm -hmm. um, i'm going to be going to the east coast we're going back up north and deidre and i are going to be just living on the road uh, yeah anyone who wants to pray for us please do because yeah. we need to pray for each other i, I thank you in advance for any prayers yeah. <coughs> peter has a, a boarding room called the hope house yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so pray that's, for the his tendons yeah i want to see people really come to jesus mm -hmm. fully and we can't force anyone it never can works. Share. It can only just, uh, <laughs> God's got to draw them first, and mm -hmm. we have to share the love of Jesus with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's pray. So, Father, I thank you, Lord, um, just for the testimonies, first of all. Mm. Um, we got to witness so many things. We don't even know uh, the ripple effect of all of these amazing um, testimonies and stories uh, that you impacted in Taiwan. And uh, we just uh, pray, Lord, um, for the people uh, that are watching this uh, we spoke about unforgiveness and holy spirit i just pray um, that you would help anybody out there watching this that has unforgiveness through somebody that harmed them mm -hmm. um, maybe when they were younger or maybe even recently somebody that uh, sinned against them or did something that's not right against them that holy spirit you would help them um, surrender and, and give that to you and i just pray right now in the name of jesus you would feel his love you would feel his compassion, um, you'd feel his mercy, um, and that he would help you release that place in your heart. Yes. Um, and I just thank God for your life. Maybe, uh, maybe you're kind of just on the fence with Jesus. You're not all in. Yeah, go all in. And uh, you've heard that amazing adventure Peter and I have got to live, and uh, that you can live the life uh, fully devoted to Jesus, and 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 he can fill you. Uh, with the things that you're you're searching for in your heart. And I just pray that the Holy Spirit right now would minister to you, that you would feel um, his presence um, tangibly, and that he would just uh, show up uh, even now through this prayer. Yeah, yes, touch him, Lord. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, like uh, I always say, like a poker game, when, you're, mm -hmm. when your chips are down, there's a move. I was never good at poker, but <laughs> you can go all in. You just put mm -hmm. all your chips in. Mm -hmm. It's like your last big, that's all you got. 
Mm. That's how you got to be with Jesus. Just go all in. Mm -hmm. Give him everything. Everything. Give him. Ev don't hold back. Mm -hmm. Give him all your pain and all mm -hmm. your hurts and all your sins, all the things mm -hmm. you've done that you know now are against God. Give it to him. And he already paid the price. You've been purchased with the highest price, the blood of Jesus. There's no mm. higher price. And there's nothing else that can forgive you except the blood of Jesus. Mm. And Jesus says he became sin for us. So, and he took the punishment we right, righteously deserve from a, a holy God. Mm -hmm. And he did it on the cross already. So give it all to him. And uh, <clears throat> he won't be shocked by what you tell him because he's seen it all. It's everything true. that's happened, everything you've done. Mm -hmm. When the lights were off and you thought no one was looking, he's seen it all. Mm -hmm. So just, he wants us to fess up, to, to, to say, yes, I, mm -hmm. I take ownership of uh, this time I lied, I cheated. Mm -hmm. And uh, give it all to him. And then he gives you his peace. He's called the mm -hmm. Prince of Peace. And I'll tell you, man, like in Taiwan, that's what people are looking for mm -hmm. everywhere. New mm -hmm. Age, everywhere. They're mm -hmm. looking for peace. And you can't find it outside of Jesus Christ. I guarantee you. Mm -hmm. No religion, not even the Christian religion without mm -hmm. Jesus can give you peace. Mm -hmm. He's the only one who can do it. And he says he gives peace beyond understanding. And mm. I, I felt that peace. I can't explain it because it's beyond understanding. <laughs> it's true. And even when things are crumbling and finances and family issues, he can still give you that peace. And people are coming against you and you're, I mm. don't know, maybe you're in a court battle. He can give you peace. Maybe your family member is on mm. the dying or something. Other thing I want to do is pray for you for healing too. Mm. I really feel strongly because mm. that's one thing that I've struggled with my whole life. Mm -hmm. Maybe you haven't seen someone pray this way for healing because uh, at least, <clears throat> so I'm just going to do what Jesus said. Uh, in Mark 16, he said, we'll lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to pray that way because we've seen it many times. So mm -hmm. right now in the name of Jesus, whatever sickness you're dealing with, <clears throat> I don't know if it's arthritis or if it's cancer, I, mm -hmm. I have a hatred for cancer. Mm -hmm. All of it now come out of these bodies. Mm -hmm. The arthritis leave the joints. The cancer leave the the organs, the prostate, the mm -hmm. breast, the the spine. Even metastatic cancer, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Right now, that that thing, all the wicked disease, you leave the bodies. Mm -hmm. Everything, mm -hmm. everything. Stomach problems, mm -hmm. indigestion. Um, I don't know, like autoimmune diseases, even mm -hmm. stuff that happened through even through medicine, damage from medicine, vaccines. Mm -hmm. to be healed in the name of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and stuff with the mind the mm -hmm. mental mental issues like bipolar Jesus mm -hmm. is above those things mm -hmm. bipolar schizophrenia the depression mm -hmm. oppression of every kind darkness um, mm -hmm. even anger issues mm -hmm. whatever I command it in the name mm -hmm. of Jesus you, you loose their bodies come out mm -hmm. of their minds come out of their mm -hmm. bodies mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. incurable diseases mm -hmm. uh, Lou Gehrig's or whatever it is Mm -hmm. diseases that are mystery disease they can't even they don't know what's going on leave mm -hmm. the bodies in Jesus name mm -hmm. strange things happening at night strange uh, neurological issues leave in the name mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. this is Jesus this is nothing to do with us guys mm -hmm. he it says with his wounds you are healed with mm -hmm. his stripes you are healed Psalm 103 mm -hmm. says he forgives all your sins if you mm -hmm. believe that it says in the same verse he forgives or heals all your mm -hmm. diseases every disease it says in Ephesians the name of Jesus above the name of everything else that can everything. be named that includes the name of cancer mm -hmm. the name of diabetes or the name of organ failure mm -hmm. sepsis i don't care mm -hmm. in the name of jesus touch these people i pray because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. you are the healer i've discovered mm -hmm. it i know it's true mm -hmm. and uh in faith you can receive that mm -hmm. thank you jesus thank you jesus be yeah. healed in jesus name yeah even anxiety <clears throat> i pray if you have any anxiety yeah. that anxiety would just lift off and uh, you would feel the lightness and the peace of God come <coughs> over you right now. Yes. In Jesus' name. Nightmares, I, I, too. Yeah. Nightmares leave in Jesus' name. People. I, yeah. Nightmares. I pray you would sleep well at night. If you're having trouble sleeping, you would have the best sleep you've ever had. Yeah. Um, I just pray you would encounter right now the Prince of Peace, uh, that you would encounter the love of Jesus, mm -hmm. um, even the baptism of the Holy Spirit, that you would just be filled to an yeah. overflow with now. the Holy Spirit. Fill there's always the more. <laughs> yeah. Like there's always, always more. more. Like you know how in the world we search for more. There's always more of Him. There's always, you can always step in uh, to Christ, mm -hmm. um, and let Him flow through you. It's living water. <laughs> like you can, it's it flows in and out. Yeah. So you can uh, step into that. Yeah, and even if you're in a struggle mm -hmm. right now, <laughs> my wife used to say, Peter, you're grumpy, go pray mm -hmm. for someone. Because she knew <laughs> I'd always come home happy. <laughs> even if the, it didn't seem like anything happened when I prayed. 
because uh, it's better to give the re- than to receive. <coughs> so if you're a believer and you're going mm-hmm. through some stuff, find someone you can pray for. Outreach and does this. Yeah. It's like you're stepping into Christ as you be obedient. Yeah, uh, it happened more times than I can count. <laughs> it's hard not to be joyful when you're sharing Jesus. Yeah, like, yeah, and and you know it takes a uh, it takes our minds off of mm-hmm. our own issues that we're going through, mm-hmm. and um, it's awesome to see other somebody else touched by God. Um, you know, I had shoulder problems for a long time, and I prayed mm. for people with shoulder problems, and they would get healed, and it brought me joy. <laughs> so amazing. Actually, it, there's when you see people touched by God, it, it's it's amazing. Like yeah. it, it never really gets old. <laughs> no. <laughs> like we saw a baptism yesterday; it was amazing. Seeing yeah. Him come out of the water, I was like, "This just is so awesome." <laughs> yeah, and you know, like I don't know, Brody's YouTube, uh, Brody's Facebook is just like all about Jesus, and that's this guy was um, convicted oh, yeah. by seeing he was he was he was like, "I want that." Mm. and uh yeah god bless you for doing this podcast so mm-hmm. you know we got to get the good news out psalm 105 says declare the works of the lord or something like that so you know you you check out the news it's all bad news mm-hmm. yeah we want to give you good news today. this is a good news this is a he- heavenly news news mm-hmm. from heaven it's totally different than the news on here on earth yeah, his it's kingdom is not of hope. this earth <laughs> yeah so actually uh, mm-hmm. before we go just an encouragement use your social media use your instagram use your stories to glorify god um share his word share testimonies share good things yeah uh, you never know who's going to hear that word who's going to hear um about jesus yeah i i also want to say okay so if you've been hurt by church mm. maybe pastor priest i don't know what it is mm. you still have to forgive mm. and um nobody like <clears throat> i heard somebody say jesus is the most represented person ever mm. and i believe it just whatever bad experiences you've had with church religion it could be because Jesus is misrepresented mm-hmm. and um, <clears throat> get to know him personally. And <clears throat> I had to stop focusing on some of the stuff I experienced in mm-hmm. Christianity. Most of it was awesome, mm-hmm. but some of it didn't line up. When I, when I read Matthew, Mark, mm-hmm. Luke, John, and I read it with new fresh set of eyes, I was like, wow, Jesus said this, but I'd never seen this happen in my church. I've never seen him, uh, someone speak like this with forgiveness like that and and grace like that so that's one thing you could uh repent of <clears throat> and just make a decision you can be that person who's authentic mm. yeah if you've seen hypocrisy in the church we all have mm-hmm. are in believers mm-hmm. you can be the authentic person mm-hmm. <laughs> so show others how it's done yeah. <laughs> and uh and we all fall short so we've all yeah I I've know, the, yeah the first thing i heard as a believer is no perfect person like we all we're all being worked on <laughs> yeah so the enemy tries to but god brought me to a point i had mm. a dream of jesus and then i re- in a moment in a split second i knew i didn't even know who jesus mm. was even though i was in church for 30 years <laughs> and then god basically spoke to me and said peter you're a hypocrite mm. i went to church on sunday but i lived so for two hours of mm. two hours a week i i knew I could how to sit still <laughs> and I thought that's what God wanted from me and that's that's a big deception he wants our heart mm-hmm. and when you give him your heart and and you surrender to him then you want to him to live through you 24 mm-hmm. 7 yeah it's totally a different life so God bless yeah. you guys uh thank you for for listening to yeah. the van cast <laughs> <laughs> some of you might be watching this on um podbean but you can watch the video on YouTube and I'll put all the d- different links in there and everything. Yeah. So if you've listened this far, thank you guys. <laughs> yeah. God bless you. <laughs> God bless you. We talk a lot. Yeah. When we talk about Jesus. It's hard to, it's it's hard hard to, to stop to talking about <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> bye guys. Yeah, bye. Thanks for letting us pray. Pray for us. <laughs> yeah. Pray for us. <clears throat> Sounds good. <laughs>